All right, this is the exam three study guide. And I will just be going over how I found each answer. Please remember that you do want to be using Desmos for this exam. So that's just desmos.com when you get here. If you don't have a calculator, you can use this um, scientific calculator. They also have a four function calculator, but what we will be using for unit three is the graphing calculator. So if you, if they give you a point, you can plot that point. If they give you um, other information, they can, you can um, graph that. You can graph all four of your answer choices if you're trying to decide between um, which answer is correct. So I encourage you, if you don't know what to do, put the information that they give you into Desmos. Okay, so we'll start with just plotting points. Should be um, pretty self-explanatory. So this says plot the ordered pair negative four, four. Remember that any ordered pair is in the order x comma y. It will never be in any other order. So you're starting at the origin, which is zero, zero, which is hard to find on these, I think. But remember, on an exam, you won't be graphing. You'll be choosing from um, multiple choice options. It looks like I found the center. So from that origin, this is your y-axis. These are positive y's. Here's negative y's. This direction is positive x. This direction is negative x. So you're going to want to move from that origin. X means you're moving on the x-axis, so left to right. So my x here is negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4. So that's where I've gone on my x. And then my y, positive y, that number is where you go up or down. So here we go up one, two, three, four. This is the point negative four, four. Okay, plot the ordered pair on which quadrant or which axis does the point lie? The point is on the one, two, three, four. It is in the second quadrant. You start with the positive, positive, positive y, positive x, and then you move counterclockwise. So this is one, two, three, and four. This is the second quadrant. Okay. They like the Roman numerals. This is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. Just count how many lines there are, except that that's a five. <laughs> find the x and y coordinates of the point E. They might give you more than one point on the exam, but make sure you find the one they're asking you to find. E is from the origin again on x. Your x is always first and then your y. So x is negative one, two, three. And then my y is negative two. That's my coordinates to find point E. Plot the order pair zero, zero, negative 0 0.5. Oh, I'm not even gonna. I can't do this. It would be there. Which quadrant is it in? Here is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. But if it is on, so zero on the X, one half on the Y, or sorry, zero on the X, one half on the Y. That means it was on the X axis because it didn't move. Or sorry, it's on the Y axis because it didn't move to the left or to the right on X. So if this number is zero, and if it's on this line, that means it's on the Y axis, we call it. Number four says find the X and Y coordinates of the labeled point. The point is A. Here, we started from the origin. We went over two, four, six, seven. So we moved seven positive on the X, but we did not move on the Y. So that point is actually seven, zero. Good. Okay. Determine whether the order pairs 521 and negative three, negative four are solutions to the following equation. Our equation is Y equals five X minus four. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ordered pair 521, remember X, Y. That means my X is equal to five. My Y is equal to 21 here, okay? Is 521 a solution of Y equals five X minus four? Y equals five times X minus four. 
That means 21 equals 5 times 5 minus 4. Good. I just replaced y with 21, and I replaced x with 5. 21 equals 25 minus 4. I think that that is true, so I'm going to say that is a solution. Okay. The next one asks, is negative 3 negative 4? So now x is negative 3, y is negative 4. Okay. Same problem y equals 5 times x minus 4. Now let's replace the y with negative 4. Negative 4 equals 5 times negative 3 minus 4. Negative 4 is equal to negative 15 minus 4. That is not true, right? This one was true. This one is not true. So we're going to say that is not a solution. Okay, another way to do this would be to put it into Desmos. So that equation was y equals 5x minus 4. Okay, and you can put it in like that, or you can put it in with y equals. We'll give you the same line. Now the points were 5, 21. Wow, 5, 21. And another point of negative 3, negative 4. So I can plot both of those points. And if I zoom out right here, I can see that 521 is on the line. Negative 3, negative 4 is not on the line. All right, number 6. Determine whether the ordered pair 8, 512, and 636 are solutions to this equation. So same thing. We're inputting x is 8. Y is 5, 4, 12, sorry, into Y equals X to the third. So Y equals X cubed, which is just X times X times X. So that becomes 512 is equal to 8 cubed. Remember that 8 cubed is just 8 times 8 times 8, okay? And 8 times 8 times 8 is 512, so that is a solution, okay? And then our next one is 6 and 36. So is 36 equal to 6 times 6 times 6? Let's see. 6 times 6 times 6 is 216, so we're going to say no. And I know this has a lot more examples than um, questions on the exam because there are only 25, possibly 26, I don't remember. So there are only 25 questions on the exam, but I just want to make sure I'm covering absolutely everything that you could possibly see, okay? Number seven asks to determine whether the equation is linear or not. The graph of the equation, graph the equation by finding and plotting ordered pair solutions, okay? So... Is y equals 2x squared linear? I strongly implore you to use a graphing calculator. We said it was y equals 2x squared. Okay. Here is a keyboard if you want to um, do it this way and not with your computer keyboard. So y equals 2x squared. Is that linear? Linear means it's a straight line, no curves, no bends. So this is not linear. Which graph does it look like? Well, it was, if we go back to our graphing calculator, it was opening up and it was not an angle really, it was more of a um, curve, right? Because our four choices are a curve, or sorry, an angle going down, an angle going up, a curve going up, or a curve going down. I think it looked like C. It doesn't look exactly like C because their um, numbers are a little bit different than ours, right? Ours is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They're going all the way up to 20. So they're going by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20. But of the four, it looks the most like C, right? And it is not linear. All right.
Determine whether the following relation represents a function. If it's a function, state the domain and range. So a function means that for each x, there is one y. OK? Here, let's mark our x's. And remember, um, our x's are our domain. The domain are our x values. So we have negative 3, negative 7 was a y, sorry, negative 6, 8, and 6. Okay, or you might see it as negative 3, negative 6, 6, and 8. Either of those is fine. It doesn't matter the order. Some people like to put it in numerical order. Okay, so what is the domain? The domain is going to be these green numbers. Negative 3, negative 6, 8, 6. Negative 3, negative 6, 8, and 6. I'm going to choose this one. Good. What is the range? The range is the y values, OK? So that's going to be negative 7, 6, 8, 6. But I see that 6 shows up twice. I don't need to write it twice. My range is just negative 7, 6, 8, OK? Negative 7, 6, 8, and 6 again. Negative 7, 6, 8. I'm going to choose this one. And then we need to go back and decide, is it a function? Each x, there's only one y. So for this negative 3, it was negative 7. For negative 6, it was positive 6. For 6, it was 6. And for 8, it was 8. So each x has only one y. It is a function. OK, something that is not a function. We say no for something like 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, negative 10. OK, that's because that's 1x with three y's. That means our 0 goes with 1, our 0 goes with 2, and our 0 goes with negative 10. That's bad. OK, it is obviously OK for the y's to repeat. That's fine. Negative 6 can go to 6, and 6 can go to 6. But it can't reverse. It can't be 6 to negative 6 and 6 to positive 6. OK? So no is when the x repeats. Yes, when each x is unique. x does not repeat. OK? Find the domain and range of the following relation and determine whether it's a function. So again, for domain, we're looking at that first number. And that is only one number. It is just the number 5, OK? Our range is 3, 5, 7, and 9. This is an example of 5 mapping to 3 to 5, to 7, and to 9. That is not a function. Each x, for a function, each x has only one y. Here we have one x with four different y's. That is a problem. Use the vertical line test to determine whether the graph is a graph or a function. Here is my graph. If I draw a line through it, and I can see that it touches the graph in two different places, it is not a function. OK? Here, this is my graph. So just to make it clear, that's my graph. And if I drew a vertical line here, we're OK. Here. We're OK. But anywhere on the graph where you draw a vertical line and it touches in more than one place, that means it is not a function.
one, two, three places it crosses right there. Not a function. All right, another circle. For find the domain and range of the relation shown on the graph to the right. Use the vertical line test to determine whether the graph is a function. We just two questions ago saw a circle that was not a function, right? The graph is not the graph of a function because a vertical line cannot. Uh, sorry. See, this will never be on an exam because this confuses me. I get this one wrong. The graph is not a graph of the function because a vertical line can be drawn so that it intersects the graph more than once. Good. All right, so that was easy. It's touching in two places, right? Okay, now we need to talk about the domain. Remember, the domain are our x values, okay? That means I want to find out where this graph starts on the x-axis and where the graph ends on the x-axis. It starts at x is 0. It ends at x is, I think it's 6, okay? So we're going from 0 to 6. My line is going from zero, or like the whole circle. I guess we can just call it a circle. The whole function is going, the not a function, the whole relation is going from negative, from 0 to positive 6. Good? On our x. So remember, x is our domain. And then we're going to Find out where it goes on y. So this is y equals a positive 6. Here's y equals 0. So our range, where does it go on the y-axis? Same thing, 0 to 6. OK? From 0 to 6, from 0 to 6. So we're going to say our domain is, it's not the single value, it's the interval, 0 to 6. And the range is also 0 to 6, OK? Given the function g of x equals 2x squared plus 9, find the values. So we have g is negative 12. That means for every x, I put in a negative 12. 2, instead of x, I'm putting in negative 12, times negative 12 squared plus 9. And they just want the answer to that, OK? Parentheses, very important, negative 12 squared, 144. So that becomes 2 times 144 plus 9. So we're going to multiply that by 2. We get 288 plus 9 is 297. So the g of negative 12 is 297. Let's do negative 1 now. The g of negative 1 is 2 times negative 1 squared plus 9. 2 times 1 plus 9 is 2 plus 9, which is 11, right? Finally, we have 3 fourths. So now it's 2 times 3 fourths squared plus 9. What is 3 fourths squared? Multiply that by 2. 1.125. Add 9. 10.125. Ooh, but they want a fraction. All right. Well, that won't come up on your exam. <laughs> um, basically, 3 fourths squared is the same as 3 fourths times 3 fourths, right? So that's 2. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16, right? 2 times 9 sixteenths plus 9. 2 times one, 2 over 1 times 9 over 16 is going to be 18 sixteenths plus 9. That doesn't really help you because you still have to add it to 9. I'm not going to keep going. Um, turn it into a fraction. Oh, no, sorry. Turn it 
turn uh, 81 over 8. These are simplified fractions, but don't worry, that won't come up on the exam. I just want to make sure you know what to do if you see that. That goes there, and then just solve it. Another one. If f of x is 2x minus 2, g of x is 2, negative 2x squared minus 3x minus 5, and h of x is negative 8x squared minus 5 pi to h of 1. So because we have the letter h, we only are worried about hx, okay? So hx is negative 8x squared. h1 means I put in a 1 for that x. Negative 8 parentheses times 1 squared. h of 1 is negative 8 times 1. h of 1 is negative 8. Good. All right. Problem six. The function f of x equals 0.16x plus 11.1 can be used to predict diamond production. x is the number of years after 2000, and f of x is the value of the year's diamond production. Use this function to predict diamond production in 2005. So we know x is years minus 2000, right? Because they say years after 2000. And f of x is the value, or y is the value. Dollars, right? In billions. Good. And here's our equation. So we know our money is equal to 0 0.16 times x. Let's look at 2005 is going to be 2005 minus 2000. So that's just going to be the number 5 plus 11.1, okay? So the reason I put, we know that our money is equal to 0.16x plus 11.1. What is x? x is the years minus 2000. So x is equal to, they're talking about the year 2005, 2005 minus 2000 which is just five, good? So I put in money equals 0.16 times five plus 11.1 billion dollars. 0.16 times five is gonna be the same as 0 0.16 times five. Either way, it's 0 0.8. So now we have 0 0.8 plus 11.1 is equal to our amount of money. Okay, 0. 0.8, sorry, 0. 0.8 plus 11.1 .1 is 11.9 billion dollars. Good. All right, use the graph of the following function f of x to find f of three. That's another way to do this is when we were, when we had, uh, for example, 2x squared plus 9, you can go to Desmos. 2x squared plus 9 is now our graph. And remember, there's always a table. So if they're asking what is um, 2x squared plus 9, they're saying what is negative 12? You just put that in for x. 297, that's the answer we got, right? Then we said what is negative 1? They said it's the number 11, which we also got. This was number 13. And then when X is three fourths, they'll give you a decimal. <laughs> uh, but that should work because I should not ask you for, I will not be asking you for a fraction on the exam. Okay, so you can always put it into the graph is just a big string of every correct answer to whatever F of X is, okay? That means that f of x is equal to whatever is happening is equal. It's the same as y, okay? If f of x equals x, then y equals x, for example. So f of 3 means I put 3 in here and I find y. So my 
If I was to make an ordered pair of f of x and x, it would be x comma y, right? So that means x comma f of x. And I know this is very confusing, but just think of f of x as y. So x, y is your point. What is f of 3? So if x is 3, what is f of x? Or if x is 3, what is y? Okay, because f of 3 means that x equals 3. So when x equals 3, what is y? 1, 2, 3. y is negative 7. That's all you have to do. You found negative 3 on the x-axis on, on the graph. What is the y value of that? If that point is 3, negative 7, that means f of x. So for the point 3, negative 7, f of 3 equals negative 7. You can say that for any point, OK? This is 0. f of 0 equals 0 because there's a point 0, 0 on your line. Okay, any point you can turn into f of x equals y. f of x equals y. Good? From this ordered pair. The graph of f of x equals 2x is shown to the right. Determine the graph of f of x equals 2x minus 1. Hmm. We did not study this. I apologize. Skip that. 18, graph the linear function by finding x and y intercepts. Then write the equation using function notation. Okay, so we're just going to do a lot of graphing practice because this is a graphing unit and a lot of, if you know how to graph, you will pass the exam, okay? Uh, you know that in my math lab, when you are graphing, you have to graph the intercepts, but don't worry about that on the exam because it's, again, it's multiple choice. So we're just going to solve for y so that I can find my y-intercept and decide which one it looks like, okay? Negative x plus 3y equals 3. By deciding which one it looks like, I mean you're going to have four graphs. Which one are you going to choose, right? Let's solve for y. I'll add x, add x. So I have 3y equals x plus 3. And divide them all by 3. That becomes y equals 1 third x plus plus one, okay? Because x over three is the same as one over three times x. Three divided by three is one. So that means my y-intercept is equal to zero comma one. That's what that number means. The number that's alone means that's where it's gonna cross y. So it's gonna cross y at a positive one. And then my graph, my slope is up one, right three. Up one, right three. Down one, left three. Down one, left three. Okay, that's my graph. You could say your intercepts are zero, one, and negative three, zero for my x intercept. If you're interested. Now it says graph the linear function by finding x and y intercepts and graph, write the equation using function notation. Function notation just means instead of y, I'm putting in f of x like before. So f y equals one third x plus one is the same as f of x equals one third x plus one. Okay, so you can put that there. Finding the x and y intercepts and write the equation using function notation. Same exact thing. We're just going to do another example. 2x minus 8y equals 8. I'm going to subtract the 2x. Subtract the 2x. I have negative 8y equals negative 2x plus 8. Divide by negative 8. Divide by negative 8. Divide by negative 8. Remember, it's a negative. <laughs> That's y is alone, negative 2 over negative 8 is simplified to 1 fourth because 2 can be divided by 2 and I get 1, 8 can be divided by 2 and I get 4, negative divided by negative is a positive. So negative 2 eighths x becomes positive 1 fourth x 
positive eight divided by negative eight it shouldn't be a plus, it should be a minus, negative one. Y equals one fourth X minus one. So just real quick, the negative two over negative eight. I can divide negative two by two. I can divide negative eight by two. Two divided by two is one. Eight divided by two is four, right? And then this is actually a division problem. So negative one divided by negative four is the same as a positive one fourth because a negative divided by negative is a positive number. So my function is one fourth x minus one. That minus one is where I'm gonna cross my x-axis and then I'm gonna go up one over four, up one over four. My intercepts are zero, negative one, and four, zero. Number 20 says graph the linear equation x equals negative five. Remember, if there is x, it will cross the x-axis. Where is it gonna cross the x-axis? At x equals negative five. Ah, it's a positive five, sorry. X equals negative five. Everywhere else that X equals negative five will be on that line. So the linear equation X equals negative five is just a line along negative five on the X axis. Y equals two, if it has Y, it will cross the Y axis. So let's mark my y-axis at two. Everywhere else, y equals two. Good. So the linear equation y equals two is right here. No matter what x is, y is going to be 2. When x is 0, if I put x is 0 into that equation, y is still going to be 2. If I put x is negative 1 into that equation, y is still going to be 2. No matter what x I put, y is still 2. Same up here. x, y. If y is 0, x is still negative 5. If y is negative 1, x is still negative 5. If y is 1, x is still negative 5. There's no y I can put in there that moves it from x is negative 5. Okay, uh, I think I mentioned this in class, but I think that the most difficult questions are going to be slope of the line through two points. The equation for slope is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? So this is going to be, you're going to take your first point, and label x1 and y1. So x1 is seven, y1 is eight. Second point is negative seven, eight. So x2 is negative seven, y2 is positive eight, okay? So m, is y2 minus y1, that means I'm gonna take eight, subtract eight. On the bottom, x2 minus x1, x2 is negative seven, x1 is also seven, okay? So I have eight minus eight, that's zero, over negative seven minus seven is a negative 14, okay? Take zero divided by negative 14. Zero divided by negative 14 is zero. So the slope of the line is Zero. Zero is not undefined, okay? Undefined means I put it into my calculator and it gives me back an error, okay? So you can divide zero by negative 14. You'll get zero. You can't divide negative 14 by zero, okay? So that slope is zero. Find the slope of the line that goes through the points eight 
negative three as my point one. So that means x1 is eight, y1 is negative three, point two is eight, negative five. So that means my x2 is eight, my y2 is negative five. Same equation, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 is negative five. Oh, sorry, comma. <laughs> minus y1 is negative three, so it's a double negative. Five minus a ne negative five minus a negative three. x2 was eight minus x1 is eight. So now I have negative five minus a negative three, which is negative five plus three over eight divided, eight minus eight is zero. So that's negative two over zero. Remember we said negative 14 divided by zero is error. Negative two divided by zero is also an error. So if you have zero on the bottom, that is gonna be an undefined answer, okay? 24, find the slope of the line that goes through the given points. Wow, did a lot of these. Same equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This will be x1, y1, x2, y2, okay? So we have 0 minus 8 over negative 2 minus 0, okay? 0 minus 8 is just negative 8. Negative 2 minus 0 is just negative 2. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is a positive 4. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is also 4 because two negatives make a positive. So the slope of the line is m equals 4. It's the same as 4 over 1. So if you had 4 and you were here, you would go up 4 over 1 up four over one or down four left one down four left one okay use the points on the graph to determine the slope of the line we have this point so i'm just going to label it that is zero one this point is two zero okay find the slope of the line i'm going to call that x1 y1 x2 y2 so it's just another slope finding the slope equation m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so that becomes zero minus one over two minus zero. So that's negative one half. Find the slope of the line x equals negative three. So I want you to think about what this means. Here's my line, x is negative three. It's gonna pass through the x-axis at negative three. So that means it's gonna be a horizontal, or sorry, a vertical line. If it's a vertical line, think about slope face. This is positive, this is negative, this is undefined, this is a zero slope, okay? Or if you don't remember that, we can think about this line. We know that x is negative three when y is one, right? We also know that x is negative three when y is zero, so I can put that into this equation x1, y1, x2, y2, okay? So we have y1 minus y, sorry, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Zero minus one over negative three minus negative three. Good. Zero minus one is just negative one over negative three plus three is zero, okay? Put that into your calculator. Negative one divided by zero is 
an error. So that is undefined. Straight up and down is undefined. Or you can put it into your slope formula. You can pick any two points on that line. That is just a straight up and down line. Find the slope of the line y equals negative 4. Imagine this. This is the point where x is 0, y is negative 4. Here's the point where x is 3, y is negative 4, OK? You can pick any um, x value. y is going to be negative 4 for it, OK? I'll even graph it. y equals negative 4 is right here, OK? Here's the point, 0 negative four. Okay. Here's the point three, negative four, just to prove to you that those are on the line. And then our other one was X is negative three. I'll graph that one as well. No matter what two points you choose on this line, your bottom number is always going to be zero. So it's always going to be an undefined fraction. So that was negative three, negative eight, maybe. And you could do negative three, we did negative three, negative one. You could also do negative three, zero, right? Right at the intercept, negative three, zero. Sorry, that wouldn't be negative one, that would be positive. All right, so you have your points, zero, negative four, and three, negative four. Put them in your x1, y1, x2, y2 y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 becomes negative 4 minus negative 4 over 3 minus 0. Negative 4 minus negative 4 becomes negative 4 plus 4 over 3, which is 0 over 3. You can check that in your calculator. 0 divided by 3 will give you a 0. So we say the slope is zero, which is not undefined, okay? Those are two different things. 28 asks us to find the slope and y-intercept of the line. Remember, y equals mx plus b, where b, uh, b is your y-intercept in that zero comma b is your y-intercept. And m, is your slope. So we're just going to highlight that. My slope is this one. My y-intercept is going to be negative 4. But in, um, in an ordered pair. OK, you can't just say negative 4. You have to say x is 0, y is negative 4. The slope is? positive nine. Here, same question, but we don't have it set equal to y. So we want to set it equal to y. 8x plus y equals negative two. So I'm going to subtract 8x, subtract 8x. I get y equals negative 8x minus two. So my y-intercept is the negative two. My slope is the negative eight, OK? And we said y equals negative 8x minus 2, y equals mx plus b, f of x equals 9x minus 4, because remember, f of x is the same as y. Okay? Decide whether their lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Remember, you're looking at the slope. If the slope is the same, if they are inverse opposites. But I would say the numbers 7 halves and negative 13 are not related at all in this sense. So they are not parallel or perpendicular. Here we have negative 6 and 1 6. Negative 6 over 1 is parallel to positive 1 over 6 because we did the inverse. So we flipped them and we changed the sign, right? We took 6 over 1. That was a negative. We made it a 1 over 6 and changed the negative to a positive. 
So we would say they are perpendicular. Graph the equation using the slope intercept method. You can graph the equation however you want, okay? Y equals mx plus b is by far the easiest to me. So I'm going to set it equal to y. Negative 3x plus 2y equals 3. I'm going to add 3x to both sides. 2y equals 3x plus 3 divided by 2. y equals 3 halves x plus 3 halves. All right, I want you to notice just something that crossed my mind. If I had left it as y equals, um, that's not a good example, uh, but I'll take this one. Okay, y equals 1 minus 5x. Okay, I switched those places, right? That doesn't mean that this is now my slope and this is my y-intercept, okay? The slope is always in front of x. And the y-intercept is always alone. I just wanted to make that a note, but I couldn't make it because <laughs> they're the same in this case. So um, use the graphing tool to graph the equation. We're going to start at 3 halves, which just means 1 and a half. And then we're going to go up 3 over 2. Up 3 over 2. All right, so that's the graph. Of the line, the y-intercept is alone. The slope is with x. <laughs> Here we have y equals negative five x plus one. Remember, one means I have a zero one as where I'm gonna cross the y. So that one's okay. That one is not okay because that's below the x-axis. Um, this one is also below the x-axis. This one is above. Okay, so for the y-intercept, we've eliminated b and c. We only have a and d. Now we are looking at the graph, the slope of the graph. Negative 5 means it's going to be going in a downward angle and kind of steep because it's going to go from here one two three four five down one over one two three four five down one over so it's going to be a very steep negative slope this is a positive slope so it cannot be a we already said it can't be b and it cannot be c d is a steep negative slope beginning at the point or sorry crossing y at the point zero one it never really begins or ends because it's a never-ending line so i would choose d there Use slope-intercept form of the linear equation to write the equation of the line with the given slope and y-intercept. So the slope is negative 9, and the y-intercept is 0, negative 3 fourths. They want the equation y equals mx plus b. Okay, don't be nervous about the fraction. What you do is you recognize that this is your b. Ignore the 0, right? And then this is my m. So I'm going to say y equals negative 9x minus 3 fourths, because I can't ignore that the 3 fourths is a negative number. 35, find the equation of the line with the slope containing the given point. Okay, this is the pretty, well, no, it's okay. It's an okay question. It's kind of difficult. So we have my line, my point, sorry, point 1 is 0 comma, <laughs> start over. Point one is negative nine, zero. That means x1 is negative nine, y1 is zero, okay? Slope is negative one fifth, good? So we use the point equation y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 y minus zero equals negative one fifth times x minus negative nine. Good. y equals negative one fifth times x plus nine. Yeah. y equals negative one fifth 
x plus 9, oh, sorry, plus negative 9 fifths. One more time. y equals negative 1 third x, because I'm distributing the negative 1 fifth. Sorry, it looks like a 3 when I wrote it there. I'm distributing the 1 fifth, negative 1 fifth x, negative 1 fifth times 9, minus positive 9 divided by negative 5. It's going to be negative 9 fifths. So the equation is y equals negative one fifth x minus nine fifths. Find an equation of the line having the given slope and containing the given point. The slope is three fourths through negative 12, four. So m is a positive three fourths, x one, is negative 12, y1 is 4, okay? y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y minus 4 equals 3 fourths times x minus negative 12. y minus 4 equals 3 fourths times x plus 12. Uh, keep going. 3 fourths x. I'm distributing the 3 fourths now. 3 fourths times 12 is... So if I look at that 3 fourths, I can take the 3, multiply it by 12, divide it by 4, or I can just say 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Or you can say 3 fourths times 12 over 1 is 36. 4 times 1 is 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9. Okay. Plus 9. So basically 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So I can take those and just call them 3. Now I'm going to add the 9, or sorry, add the 4, I apologize, add the 4, y equals 3 fourths x plus 13. So the equation of that line is y equals 3 fourths x plus 13. Now a horizontal line through 0, 3 x is 0, y is 3. It's a horizontal line. So it's just a line, y equals 3. Vertical line through 1, negative 1. Vertical line means it's straight up and down. So that's going to be x equals 1. My first number was my x value. My x value is 1. So that equation is x equals 1.